Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Milos and I'm a creator of original maps which are regularly posted on Instagram and Twitter. In today's tutorial, you will learn how to map data points using R. In specific, we will be using the GeoNames database which includes information on major towns around the globe. You will also learn how you can filter this database so that you can also map towns for certain countries. Then we will also play a bit with the size of these points, their colors, and finally you will also learn how you can filter data even when you don't have a filtering column in the table. Let's roll! We will be using the GeoNames dataset, which is an open dataset with information on all major cities around the globe. This dataset is based on over a hundred different state official sources and it is updated monthly. Well, that sounds pretty cool. If you click on the table tab on this website, you will get a snapshot of the table. Among different columns, you will see the unique ID, then the name of the town, then a country. Uh, then for us, very interesting part is the population size, but there is even a digital elevation model. And finally, there is a column which specified coordinates, which will come in handy when we start mapping. For the purpose of this tutorial, we want to download the data in the form of a CSV file. And to do that, we simply go to the export tab and here we can find the CSV file format and the link next to it. What we do next is in order to get R to download this data, we need uh, this link. So we will click on the right and then just simply copy this link address. Another cool feature on this website is an API service which allows you to fetch a certain amount of data and then load them directly into R. But in this case you also need to register for free and I just wanted to avoid this hustle so we will be downloading the data which is anyway small around 26 megabytes. And we're back in our environment where we're going to use several libraries for today's tutorial. The first one is Tidyverse, which is a collection of very important packages for data wrangling and visualization, DeepLayer and ggplot2 among others. Then we're going to use String R for um, also data wrangling. In specific, we're going to use it to split one of the columns we need. HTTR we're going to use to create a GET request in order to fetch the data from the server. SF package will be used to manipulate the shapefiles. Gisco R is used to uh, import country shapefiles. In our case, we want to import specific country. And scales will be used to create pretty breaks uh, among our values. In this chunk, we will download the data to our hard drive. First of all, we will define the file name. Second, we will define the table link that we copied before. And finally, we will make a get request here using HTTR get function. For this, we will need the table link and we will need the file name. Optionally, you can also define the progress bar as I did here. Now we can load the data into R. Remember, this file is in a CSV format and the separator is a semicolon. Every time I load the data frame into R, I like to inspect its content. So in order to do that, you can use either head or tail function. Head gives you the first few rows of a data frame and the tail function gives you the last few rows of a data frame. So in this case, we're going to use head and then we're going to inspect the contents to see whether we actually got the data we wanted from the website. Now here, what you can see is, of course, uh, there are several names here, so everything is fine. There is a country and at the end there is also uh, coordinates. But what you can also notice, uh, the column names are completely screwed up. Uh, those column names, which consist of two words, are separated by a dot, which always happens uh, when you use a tab between the two instead of, let's say, uh, underscore or snake case. So remember, if you're making your own tables, always use underscore or uh, a snake case to avoid this happening in R. Speaking of names, we use the names function from base R to inspect the names of our columns. And what we find here is that there are 20 column names and we don't need all of them in this case. It's also a good practice to filter out and uh, decrease the size of much bigger tables. So in our case, we just need a town name, country name, 
population size and coordinates. So we select columns 2, 7, 14, and 20, and we also give them appropriate names. Uh, so name for the town name, country code, pop for population, and courts for the coordinates. We inspect the first few rows of the table once more, and we see that all the columns are there. Truth be told, if you want to work with coordinates in R, you first need to create two fields, a longitude and latitude coordinates. In our case, we only have a single coordinate field. So what we need to do is we need to split this column into two. And here we call to rescue the string R function str split fix, where we first need to define the column name that we want to split, second, the separator. In our case, it's a comma separator. And uh, third, the number of new columns that we want to create. Once we are done with this, we then simply remove the courts column, which we don't need anymore. Inspecting the data frame once more, we find now that we don't have the courts column anymore, but we do have the lat and long column. Working with coordinates in R is pretty straightforward if you have a shapefile. In our case, we have a data frame which you want to convert into a shapefile. In order to do that, we use the SF package and more specifically, the STSSF function from this package. So we first define the standard uh, coordinate wrapper system, which is WGS84. And then we also specify our coordinate columns in the table, which is long and lat. And if we inspect this new shape object, we will find out that it's a point object with a certain bounding box and with a certain geographic projection. It has all the same columns from our table with an addition of geometry column. Okay, if we did this right, we should be able to see a world map of all the major towns from the GeoNames database. So we're going to use the ggplot2 to check this. We simply define the ggplot2 and then use the geomsf uh, function from this package, which helps us plot a shape file. And we'll just use some generic color. So let's see what we got. So guys, I returned a world map of major towns. And as you can see, it's a pretty chaotic one. It has just a bunch of dots of the same size and the same color. What we want to do next, what I'm going to show you is how to filter towns for a specific country. Luckily, we have a country code column, which denotes an ISO2 country code for any country in the world. And let's say in this tutorial, we are interested in the major towns in the United Kingdom. So what we're going to do next is simply define the filter with the country code set to GP and keep everything the same. Now, if you're interested in plotting for any other country in the world, check out that a link that I posted just below the chunk. So we retrieve our map of major towns in the UK. And again, it's a pretty basic map with a uniform point size, color. But what was really important in this part is that we had a country code column in our shapefile, which allowed us to then filter points that are exclusively within the UK. But in many other cases, the data can be messy and you only have, let's say, coordinates. What do you do then? Now, the best way to then determine whether your coordinates belong to a specific country, in this case, UK, is to apply point in polygon function, which basically what it does is takes a polygon of a unit, in this case, country, and then determines whether your points, in this case, towns, fall within this polygon. So we already have data points. What we need next is a specific country polygon. And for that purpose, we can use the GISCO R package, which simply calls different country shape files based on their ISO 3 code. So in this case, the ISO 3 code of the United Kingdom is GBR. What we do that, we simply call that. And then we transform into the same coordinate system as uh, those places are. And this is very important because in order to determine whether a certain place falls within the UK polygon, you need to have the same coordinate system. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Then in the next chunk, we use the ST intersection function from SF, which determines whether a point falls within a polygon. In our case, it determines whether a town falls within the UK polygon giving us ultimately UK towns. As you can see, the alternative method 
yields basically the same map. So far we mapped only the location of the towns, but what if we want to distinguish among the towns based on their population size? In order to do that, we need to pass the size argument into our ggplot, and for that we use the pop column from our shapefile. This will actually create different circle sizes based on the population size. But in order to also determine the threshold we want to use, we use the scale size function. In the range one, we put the minimum and the maximum value of our points, and also we define breaks. Now the scales package has a pretty nice one, it's called pretty breaks, which is gonna create uh, pretty breaks, of course, and a nicely divided ones based on the number of points that you define. So in this map, what you notice is that UK has a lot of towns, but compared to the previous map, now you can actually notice the concentration of big towns in certain areas. So you can clearly see London, for example. You can see other parts which have bigger towns and then those which have smaller towns. This really helps you visualize, okay, where are the biggest towns in this country? As you notice, some areas are cluttered with uh, major towns, so it's really difficult to discern amongst them. One of the tricks that you can use is to manipulate the alpha value. It's simply the lightning value, so if you choose a lower alpha value, your points will become less visible and vice versa. If you choose a higher alpha value, they'll be more visible. In this code, we opt for a value between 0 and 1, which is somewhere in the middle, so 0.5. You can now see that some of the circles are less visible, but it also decluttered some uh, very busy areas. And you can finally also see the sizes of these individual circles, which makes the map way more visible than before. Feel free to play a bit with the scale size option and set different sizes for your coordinate points and maybe even accentuate some bigger towns by increasing the scale size for them. But what I want to show you next is how you label places in R. Luckily for us, there is a very nice package called ggrepel, which allows you to plot labels on your map. And in this case, there are two methods that you can apply. One is simply using the existing data frame that we have and then filter UK towns. And the second one is use the shapefile of UK towns and then turn it into a data frame. The first method, again, is very straightforward. So we just use all the places we have, then we filter for the UK towns, and then we select the name of the town, longitude, latitude, and population values. Finally, we arrange the data set based on the population estimates in descending order. In the second method, we are gonna use the shapefile of UK places, and then transform it into a data frame with information on the town name and population size, and then sort it again in descending order. So this time we're gonna use our UK places shapefile, and then we will gonna transform the longitude and latitude measures and strip them off the geometry field. Next, we're gonna select name, longitude, latitude, and population. And then a very important step, we're gonna drop the geometry basically turning the shapefile into a data frame. Then we will declare it as a data frame. And finally, we will arrange the whole data based on the population in descending order. The reason why we organized the data set in the descending order is that we can now actually plot the first 5, 10, 20 most populated places in the UK. And the way we do that, we simply plug in a new code, which calls the geomtext repel function from the ggrepel package into our code. And in this case, we simply use the UK label places and we specify that we want rows one to 10. So the first 10 most populated places in the UK. Second, we say that for our mapping purposes, we're going to have longitude and latitude, and our labels are going to be names. Now, this package has a lot of potential. So basically, you can do different things with uh, font sizes, colors, uh, font families, different things, really. So here, I'm just showing the basic stuff that you can use. And uh, we're just using some simple colors. So this is a darker gray color. We are selecting a bold font face. You can also choose for normal, for italic as well and uh, size 4. You can also make it bigger, you can make it smaller. 
As we added the names of the top 10 most popular places in the UK, now it's much easier to actually eyeball this map. You can also play further with this, you can uh, increase the font size, decrease, you can choose a different color. It's up to you. Guys, we created our UK map of major towns. We labeled it, but we totally forgot so far to include the national borders of the UK. Now, we can use that shapefile of the, the UK and plug it in here. But what is very, very important to note is the order in which you're going to do it. So in this chunk, you will see that we first plot the UK borders and then followed by UK places. Additional thing here is the color will denote the borders itself and the fill is going to denote how you color what is inside that polygon. So here we use the transparent function, allowing us to actually show the points while keeping the polygons of the national borders itself transparent. The default ggplot2 theme is pretty boring. It has a great background, it has a lot of uh, lines, it has usually access titles and ticks and labels, and I usually just create a customized minimal theme. So I start off with the theme minimal function, which is already defined in ggplot2, and then within the theme argument, I also uh, get rid of some other elements, such as, for example, access lines, access ticks, uh, minor and major grids as well. And uh, one other thing I also like to do is to limit the blank space around the map itself. And for that, I manipulate a bit the margins. So I use the plot margin argument from ggplot2, and then I set uh, these different values from the top, bottom, right, and left margins to zero. Now, I also like to have a plain uh, background, meaning usually white or in some kind of a cream color. So for that, I use uh, plot background, final background, uh, and ledger background arguments. And for the fill, I usually set white. But here, you are free to play and you can put some other hex value. And here is our final map. As you can see, we got rid of all excess parts of the theme. It's now blank and without any lines or other additional text. Um, if you want to play more with this, feel free. It's possible also to keep some of the features. It's possible to change the color and the size, whatever fits your purposes. And that's all, folks. In this tutorial, you hopefully learn how to map data points using R and ggplot2. Uh, in this tutorial, we use the GeoNames dataset, which collects information on the most major places in the world. You also learned how to import this data, how to do data wrangling, filtering, and also mapping. You learn how to create different sizes of your bubbles based on the population, and also to label those places. Now, as an example, I use the UK, but I believe that you can take this to another country region or even continents feel free to check the full code down below clone it uh, reproduce it reuse it modify as you see fit i'd be happy to hear your view on how this map could be improved or even extended to other geographic realms to do so please follow me on twitter instagram or facebook also feel free to support my work by buying me coffee see you next time